Um, welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, so this is the first of a series of two webinars that we're going to present. Um, and the series name is The Future of Digital Work Management is Simpler, Faster and Mobile. Uh, and what we're going to unpack today is using your mobile technology for expedited work identification and feedback. Um, yeah, and it's my pleasure to, to welcome you all to this webinar. I'm Dirk Janssen van Rensburg. I'm the Managing Director for Pragma Research and Development, and we're responsible for developing all the software technologies and tools used um, within the Pragma group of companies and, with, and for our clients uh, to simplify the asset management processes. I'm joined with Stefan Swanepoel, our, our Enterprise Asset Management System Product Manager. Uh, Martinez Berger as well, he's the Head of Projects and Consulting. He's got uh, decades of experience of implementing uh, enterprise asset management systems in, in many industries. And then we've got Moritz Zastrom as well, and he is our product owner for Onkey Insights and Action. And throughout this webinar, it will become clear to you where, where each of their field of expertise lies, and, and obviously they'll be able to, to answer many of your questions. Before we get started, I just want to remind you, this is, the, again, as I said, the first of two, um, two webinars. The next one will be on the 22nd of June at 11 o'clock. Um, and the, the theme will be more efficient maintenance execution using mobile technology. And it will also become clear to you throughout this webinar how these two webinars actually complement one another. Uh, and lastly, before we go, um, yes, get started. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A uh, icon. You can just click that uh, and you're welcome to post any of your questions in there throughout the webinar and we'll try and moderate those and, and give those questions through to the presenters and they can answer it as, as we go along. Excellent. So let's get going. Um, I'm just going to quickly intro the, the conversation. Um, yeah, and the question I had for myself and for, for my team was around research. You know, what can we expect in terms of you know, mobile technology and adoption of that in, in the current economic climate that we're in? You know, is this current economic climate that we're in uh, and the pressure everyone is feeling, is that accelerating the adoption of mobile technology? I think that was a question because as a, as a team, as Pragma Research and Development, we certainly investing a lot of our effort and energies into mobile technology. Um, and obviously we need to see if that is aligned with what the market's experiencing out there. And the second, second question I've got is, um, you know, are mobile apps, uh, a form of digital innovation. Everyone is currently driving in digital innovation, but is that currently seen as digital innovation? Mobile apps has been around for for a decade almost, I would say, a smartphone certainly for a while. Um, you know, and what, where are we within this cycle of, of digital innovation when it comes to mobile apps? Um, when I look for, for answers of, of this nature, I go to our um, research partners, and there's a company called Vedantix based in the UK. You know, they do a lot of research across, you know, what they call operational excellence, which includes asset management. And as you can see, there's just a quick breakdown of the companies in they engage with to, 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 to get feedback from um, and what they base their research on. And you'll see that it's got a, um, you know, a, a cover across many different asset intensive industries and many countries, obviously quite influenced by North America and, and Europe, but also, you know, other parts of the world as well. So let's see what they have to say. Um, in, in part of their research. And, you know, the, the question was uh, in this research, to what extent is COVID-19 and the economic recession driving investment in new technology, if any, at your firm? And I guess to no surprise, you know, the top of the list is then investment into connected, to work, connected worker solutions for health and safety. And obviously one can understand that in terms of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of focus shifting towards employee safety. But then the second on that list is the investment into mobile apps for inspection, maintenance, planning and execution. Um, you know, and it's quite clear that, you know, as we try to put you, I'm just going to shift this thing on my screen. Um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has increased the investment in technologies that enable remote operations and ensure business continuity. So, so I think that's the first lesson for all of us. And I think all of us would intuitively uh, appreciate and understand that, you know, that you employ mobile apps to create that, you know, business continuity and improve your efficiency. And especially that's becoming more relevant in this challenging economic climate that we're in. And the second is, second question that we want to answer uh, is, you know, each organization currently is not in some shape or form on a, on a digitalization drive. And do we still see mobile apps and introduction of mobile apps as a key digital uh, form of innovation? 
and it was fascinating to see that yes you know and you know all of you in this um webinar i'm sure would appreciate that as well because that's why you've joined this webinar right is to, to to learn more about this and get a get an understanding of this um but all the companies out there at least at the Vedantics group interviewed or, or the majority of them actually also see you know the implementation of mobile apps, apps as a significant digital innovation and what was quite interesting is if you look at that top line it's currently 50% uh, of the respondents says that it's very significant the investment uh, into mobile apps that has increased in the last year from 26% to 50% almost double meaning that we're still very much in the start of this wave of a deployment of mobile apps and really getting the benefit of that so we can expect and see a significant investment in mobile apps um, and that's why we as pragmas also align us ourselves very much with that and have created this ability and competence to create a lot of mobile apps and throughout this webinar we'll look at some of those that we would want to present to you good so the next question is um and um, and we're going to get stefan in here to to explain that to us um is around you know the the on key product suite, you know, and Stephen will explain that to us. And, and where does this mobile app capability and the development of that fit into this larger architecture of the system? Over to you, Stefan. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dirk. And uh, good morning to everybody. Um, Marit, if you can please, please move on for the next slide for us. Yeah, so I think when we when we discuss the mobile technology, obviously that just doesn't doesn't just sit in isolation. You know, the, the intent behind it is for us to get information in and out of uh, core systems to enable our, uh, you know, our staff and, and, and clients and everybody that interacts with us to get information more efficiently from us and, and also back to us to take action on. So just before we go into the details of, of the mobile apps uh, today, just a bit of context in terms of where does this fit in in terms of the bigger Onkey product suite. So if we look at this picture that we've got in front of us, uh, Behind everything here sits the Onkey core enterprise asset management system where your intelligent asset register lives, your assets are registered, uh, the maintenance plans that uh, is used to maintain those assets, the work management capability to make sure that work orders are issued to the right people at the right time and feedback is gathered. And then obviously also your supply and materials side, uh, get contractors and materials that, that's needed to do the work. So that's your core system and it remains very critical, you know, to have to have such a system of record behind all the mobile apps. Um, otherwise it becomes a, you know, mix, mix match of uh, loose bits of information that uh, that's collected and distributed without being integrated and, you know, having proper control over service levels that, that uh, is, is associated with the work that needs to be done. In, in addition to this core system, what we what we then have in the Onkey platform is uh, we, we've got the insights uh, uh, capability, which is where we do our uh, business intelligence and analytics. And we're not going to focus on that today, but the, the um, insights uh, you know, tooling without, within the Onkey product suite also has its own ability of being um, mobile ready. So you can you can get your uh, BI data, you know, in your in the palm of your hand, you know, wherever you are through that platform. And then Onkey Action is where we're going to focus uh, most of our time today. That is the platform that we use to um, distribute and build mobile apps that's built on this core system. And although it's now just linked here to the to the core Onkey system, it can actually also interact with the insights and the Onkey Connect platforms. You know, so it, it, it gives us a, a way to orchestrate the interaction between different apps and bringing information into the uh, you know into these systems, which we'll look at briefly in the next slide. Uh, the, the next platform is is Onkey Integrate. Just briefly for us to in the back end integrate different. Um, systems with each other, ERPs, uh, your, your Onkey system as it might be, your, your maintenance execution system, um, manufacturing, you know, production management, all those other systems if, that you need to integrate in the back end. And then lastly, uh, you know, in the bigger product suite, we also have Onkey Connect, which is our uh, tooling that we, IoT tooling that we use to collect data from individual assets and feed into this, uh, into this bigger picture. Thank you, Maris. Next slide. Right, and then just very briefly, if we look at um, now specifically zooming in and into, into Onkey Action, um, what these apps that we're going to look at today is built on is, is uh, Prahma is, is using a rapid application development platform within which we build the mobile apps. And that platform allows us to um, very quickly 
build new apps, uh, you know, adapt them to different uh, changing business needs. And those apps can then be, if we look at the left-hand side, integrated with, you know, different systems of record, uh, with the bulk of them being integrated with OnKey for asset management purposes. But this type of platform also allows us to, you know, through APIs very easily integrate with other systems, you know, your SAP, whatever other uh, system of record or business application the client might have that we need to integrate and provide the end uh, mobile user with a consolidates consolidated set of information uh, to enable that person to work most efficiently and we've got a couple of examples where we where we already do that uh, to, to really bring different different sets of information to the to the end user and then very briefly lastly on the right hand side these apps uh, all provided through this platform can then uh, you know be allocated to different users you know we set scenarios here it might be different um, actually different clients and through the administration functions within the platform you know we can assign to different users the ability to use different apps also give them different roles in that uh, in that uh, process which determines what functionality they see and another important thing maybe just to briefly highlight here is that uh, you know, a single user then through this capability has the ability to um, uh, interact with multiple systems of record in the back end. So if I can take a quick example, you know, some of our uh, service clients, we would have contractors that prov uh, provide and do work for them. Uh, but each of those uh, service clients would have their own system of record behind it. But the contractor works for both of them. So they don't want three or four different apps now through this technology, they log in once, they choose with which organization they're working at that point and then go to the right app. So um, that, that just simplifies the whole user experience for the end user significantly and makes it much much uh, easier to use. Yeah, so that's just a bit of background. I think we're gonna hand over to, to Moritz now to, to take us, uh, excuse me, to, to Martinez first, to just um, take us through specifically now the, the work management business processes. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Stefan. Um, so yeah, I'm the only person on today's panel that doesn't work for the uh, development uh, house. Um, so although today's session is all about the apps, I also want to say it's not all about the apps. Uh, in the end of the day, in your factory or in your facility or in your mine, we need to make sure that our work management process is efficient that we uh, have it accurate and that we can do proper feedback. Um, so I don't want to take up a lot of time. We want to get to Moritz, who's going to show us the applications. I just wanted to put what we're going to show you today in a little bit of context. So I'm, I'm sure most of you have seen this picture, you know, the nine step work management process and the applications that we're going to focus on today will focus mainly around the steps one and two and then also step step seven, um, showing us how we can quickly and accurately you know, identify work, validate, and then also you know, follow the loop to do feedback uh, at the end. Also important to uh, just take note is in the middle of that screen, there's a couple of people collaborating. And you know, I must admit, what I've seen and what Moritz and uh, the team has done uh, is really amazing. Uh, having these integrated applications with chat functionality uh, to make sure that, that all the stakeholders in the process are always up to date and informed with what is happening uh, with regards to the work that needs to be done. So yeah, like uh, Dirk said, now I've been with Prachma for a while and I can still remember the days and might still be in use uh, with some clients where we had these little triplicate books. So you fill it in, you know, the one form would go with the requester. So he's got proof that he filled something in. One form will uh, stay in the book or go to the supervisor. And then the last one you know, that will go to the planning board for the person that must execute the work. So, so I trust that you know, we've uh, come a long way from there. And uh, without uh, any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Moritz to, to take us through the application. And um, just a reminder, uh, please, in the Q&A, if you have any questions, uh, we'll start to go through them now. Post your questions and we'll, uh, we'll answer them for you throughout the, the presentation. Thanks, Moritz. 
you can uh, take over. Thanks, Martinez, and, and good morning to everyone. Um, as Dirk said, I'm, I'm Moritz, and I'm going to quickly show you a few things um, in the apps that we've built. Um, as has been alluded to, these are only a few apps in our in our biggest suite, um, and we've really tried to integrate them very well um, with each other um, to really keep all the stakeholders um, informed and up to date of, of what's happening and to, to also expedite work. I think data velocity has become a, a big driver of, of innovation and, and you need to you need to make sure that what's happening is is accurate and that it's happening at the right time and um, because otherwise you, you might miss the bus and um, so when i started preparing for this this webinar and um, uh, i remembered that probably probably about five years ago and uh, when i started at pragma dirk told me that that every story has got a has got a or every, every good story has got a victor and a, and a villain and i, I thought um <laughs> that's quite appropriate yeah um, and and let's start with a villain, and and I'm going to try and frame it as the the common challenges that we face um, with work identification and and feedback. So the first thing is is it's inconvenient. Um, often when you see something is wrong, um, you don't know where to find the template, or you don't want to send an email, and you you might just decide to to turn a blind eye. But then also I think paper based systems are are quite a challenge, especially working in the R&D side, I think we often get excited about sexy technologies, but we often see that that um, especially low maturity organizations or in them paper is still king and, and it's the way that things have always been done. Unfortunately, this really leads to low data velocity, uh, data capturing errors and information getting lost. Then also incorrect equipment specified um, without any guidance, the person might specify the wrong piece of equipment uh, for maintenance. This can lead to incorrect planning and the actual issue not getting resolved in time. Then no visibility on my current and previous requests. I logged an item two weeks ago and two weeks ago already and, and I still don't know what's what's happened to it. Um, have they started planning? Um, is it ever going to get fixed? And I think that often leads to the challenge of people not not logging requests anymore because what, what difference does it make? Um, then duplicate requests on the same piece of equipment. And um, so if I think validation and verification of requests isn't done properly, um, you might log multiple requests on the same piece of equipment. Um, and then this could, could mean that um, we either double plan work or we, we assume that someone else has already planned it. So we, we cancel a request and we don't really um, have the traceability in terms of, of what's happening um, and what really needs to happen. And then I think a, a very common challenge is an unclear description of the work that's needed. Um, so incomplete requests and, and unstructured formatting. Um, I think if you're not involved in maintenance, you often don't know what is needed for, for accurate work description. Um, you could be providing too little um, information or too much information and some critical information um, might be missing, um, which just slows down the whole process. And then finally, um, automating and ex expediting work is, is quite a complex process um, especially um, if there's no clear guide to show you what information is needed and then the scoping and planning becomes a real headache um, and downstream process automation becomes a nightmare and in terms of, of feedback um, providing more information is, is often difficult um, so after you've submitted a request um, you might see ah it could be related to this or I just realized now that something was missing or I left out a critical um, piece of information and that's often quite it's difficult to get it to the right person um, in time and then finally it's quite difficult as an organization to gather feedback or confirmation of work done um, especially if the person um, who needs to know um, or, or who will be able to give you that confirmation of the, the work that was done is not part of your maintenance team so you might need to reach out um, and ask them, listen, has this been fixed? Um, or according to our records, this has been fixed. Did it solve the problem that it initially, um, well, or that, that you initially logged? And, and just to make sure that that um, we really get proper closing out of work orders. I think as a, as a requester um, and, and just thinking in a, in a facilities um, environment, I think one of the most frustrating things is when you log something, and you get a notification in the end that some that it was addressed and it's been fixed and you get there and it's, it's still not fixed um so i think getting a, a mechanism to to really make that um 
easier um, solves a lot of problems and, and solves a lot of headaches and frustration um, for the people logging, logging requests. So as I said, um, we obviously, in, in my story, we need a, a victor or a euro. And um, yeah, here yeah, we're gonna have a quick look at the service request app. Um, I'm gonna show you how we attempted to address um, some of those um, issues that I just mentioned. Um, and then we'll have a quick look at the feedback app as well. So the first thing that we're looking at is trying to solve the problem of it being inconvenient and paper-based systems and incorrect equipment being specified. So what we did is we built a web app which can be accessed using a QR code. So you don't need to, no one needs to download an app from the app store. You can simply open your phone's uh, native QR code, scanner, walk up to a piece of equipment, scan the piece of equipment, and then uh, see open work on that, possibly choose lower level assets. And um, so with the QR capability, actually with any link that you share, um, the QR is just one form of that. Uh, we can specify an entry level. So basically, let's say you are in a room and we put a QR code in the room, but you can um, select any sub assets or sub components in that room, then you only need one um, QR code and you enable asset browse on that, on that specific token. So you scan that piece of equipment and you can um, easily then select a sub asset. So for example, um, if you want to log maintenance that needs to be done on the aircon, you don't actually need to, um, you don't need to scan the QR code on the, um, in the roof, you can simply select that. Or on bigger assets, you can possibly have the um, asset tag. So I have a QR code on the asset itself. And then that QR code is um, dedicated to that specific asset. Um, we made it nice, as you can see in the little GIF on the left, um, we made it so that you can have registered users, so employees can log requests, or if you configure it to, to work like that, you can actually have guests also logging requests, which is quite nice for facilities management um, environment, or if you think about car rentals, if you put a QR code in a car, um, any person using that car can say, listen, there's a chip on the windscreen, and they don't actually need to be a user that, that needs to be managed. Obviously, using registered users gives us more granularity and more information in terms of who logged it, um, which can then help us to give a more um, or better catered um, experience to that, to that user. Um, then we're going to quickly look at keeping up to date with your request that you have logged. I think that's, that's often quite a, quite a frustration, at least for me when you have logged something and you don't know what's happened to it, as I mentioned before. Um, and I think this is where in the search request app, uh, we've got a dedicated section where you can actually go into your work orders that you have logged or search request that, that you have logged and you can see more information on them. And the screen that's currently being shown in the video, um, that can be configured. So depending, depending on what the organization seems, would, sorry, deems uh, to be important to that client, um, they can show, for example, the staff member that it's been assigned to, the type of work that it's been um, classified as, and then obviously the status. I think that's quite important to know what is the status of this? Is this being planned? Um, is it maybe cancelled? And, and what's the cancellation reason? Uh, it could be that what you logged is actually going to be addressed by planned or scheduled maintenance um, in the next week. So they're not going um, to not going to address this using that. But I mean, at least now I've got a way of and um, looking what happened um, to my initial request. Then duplicate requests, I think as a, as a person who, who needs to verify um, information and, and validate information, um, I think this is quite a frustration because often you don't know exactly, um, is, are they talking about the same thing? Do they know that there's something already logged against it? And, and can we just combine these two or are they two separate requests? So what we did is once you've selected an asset, so either when you've browsed to it or when you've opened the screen um, upon scanning the QR code, we show you all the work that is currently open on that asset. And then you can, you can slice and dice that information. Um, so we've, we've put in a couple of filters. We've also added a smart search. Um, so if in the GIF, I quickly clear the, clear the filter, I can search for something like a, like a casing, has anything been logged on, it, on the casing on this specific, specific piece of equipment? Um, and then I can easily say, see, yes, there is something logged. What's the status of that? I can 
as with the, the open work that I've logged, I can see what's the status of this um, and see some more information on that. Just to try and um, direct the problem at the source, so to, to prevent the users from, from logging duplicate requests. Then I guess what, um, what my study leader used to call the, the real meat and potatoes of the solution is, is the form that you can now build. Um, so depending on what your requirements are in the organization, um, we can create a form which translates back to your EAMS and your, your fields in your EAMS. So you can specify which fields you require to be filled in, which ones are optional. And then you can also um, give default values for some of the fields. So is this an emergency? You can, for example, um, specify that no, this, this, that by default, it, it's not a, an emergency. But if they want to make an, a, an emergency, we can say, yes, it is an emergency, for example. Um, I think what, what really helps us, yeah, what this enables is downstream processes, which I'll quickly touch on next. Um, at least we know that we're working with the same type of data um, and the same fields can be considered. So no longer is a, um, a comment or a request just saying coffee machine is broken, um, all that, um, that you get as, as you look at the service request. You can, for example, see when the request was logged. Um, so is this maybe, or when, when did this, this happen? Is this maybe something that happened last week and someone only got around to, to doing it now um, rather than, than assuming every um, new log is, is new information or, or a new breakdown? Um, then document management, um, as you would have seen in the GIF on the left, um, we've tried to make it easier to, to specify what type of document you're uploading. So for certain requests, you might need a specific document um, to validate um, what, what you've said, or you might just want to attach a couple of photos. Um, and I think in, in this case, what, what this also enables is at least you can see what type of attachments have been added. So with the, with the end in mind to, to automate um, to automate and to expedite this, you can you run a couple of validations and a couple of um, packages on this afterwards to make sure that whatever needs to be there is, is really there. Then the last thing in the search request app that we're gonna to touch on is the um, automation and expedition of, of work or expediting of work. So this, um, what we've done here is we've, we've tried to build in validation for, for requests. So for example, in this case, something's already been logged on the generator in the last 24 hours. So now we can say, cool, this request is valid. We've received it, um, but it might go into a different status because we've seen that something was already logged on this or on this component. Um, and what I don't show in the GIF is this is very configurable or super configurable. So for example, we can say that if it's a request on the same piece of equipment, that it was, for example, an emergency or logged as an emergency, we can perform a different outcome. So in an emergency, we can expedite it. We can, it can jump the queue and it can already um, form part of our daily allocation or someone can be notified to say, um, an emergency request was logged. Please look at this as soon as possible because um, obviously there could be far reaching consequences if we don't do that. And then just a nice little other thing that we can do is we can trigger external processes um, after we've logged the request. So say for example, you've got an on key, on -key integrate um, package to do automatic um, work order allocation um, or uh, I don't know, splitting of work. Um, so say for example, uh, we need um, work to be done on a generator, but we know for this to happen, we, we need two different contractors, one for, for fuel, um, or um, we can obviously do a lot of, a lot of validation or, or not validation processing on the information that has been logged. So we can, in our, in our form, we can say what type of information is needed. And then that on key integrate um, package can then split the work and assign it to different contractors based on, on what we have um, specified in the initial work. Then a few things that we that we didn't um, that I didn't show now, um, which which are quite nice, is the apps that we're building at the moment. We really want to make them feel as if they're one of your organization's apps, and um, so we can we can apply color schemes um, to the apps. Um, I see on on the screen resolution here it doesn't look that great, so I, I try to to um, apply a, a Springbok theme to this for the upcoming Lions tour. Um, but I mean 
you can, whether you're Xaro and you want to make it green or Sassel and you want to make it blue, um, you can do that. And, and that is adhered to in all the apps. So we can say that for client X, um, the primary color is, for example, red, and we've got a secondary color of, I don't know, yellow, hopefully not, um, but maybe. Um, then that that is the experience that you will get when you interact with with all of these apps. Something that I that I didn't show now is just an easy QR code generator that we've got. Um, so for example, if you want to generate QR codes for specific assets, and um, we've really made that easy by just, for example, selecting an asset um, and then we and uploading a template, and then we've got a little QR code generator, um, which you can then just use to print QR codes. Um, and then the last thing is just an email link that can be sent um, to users upon submission of the request. So if you want, if they want to stay informed and up to date of what was logged, and, and this is quite quite nifty for for guests. Um, obviously, your registered users can just log in and look at their request, but you might um, want to know what the progress is of a specific thing that you logged um, a while back. Then you can just follow that link and, and stay up to date with the most recent information. Um, unfortunately, our, our Victor or our Euro can't solve all the problems, or it was actually designed not to solve all the problems, and, and we actually want to tackle this in a more modular approach. Um, so we we also created the feedback app, and this is really intended to to firstly give requesters the ability to um, add more information, or to, for example, just give a compliment or, or log a complaint, or give some some general feedback on the work that was done, or this can also be used to trigger um, them to upload more, more information. Um, and, and this really, as you can see there on the slide, it's really trying to make it easier to, um, to, to close that feedback loop, um, whether you initiated it or whether the client initiated it. So if we quickly look at the, the feedback app, um, we created a web app um, to address this. So this can, once again, nothing that needs to be installed for this to work. It's a, a link that can be shared um, on different platforms. Um, obviously, the, the most um, simple ones or rudimentary ones are emails and, and SMSs, but obviously integrating with other systems, we can um, share these links using, I don't know, WhatsApp, Teams, Webox, Telegram, um, whatever it is that, that you're using, uh, these links can be, can be sent out. So what we also did is we integrated this into the first request app. So you can use these apps in conjunction. And as I mentioned before, this is what we also try and, and do in these apps um, is, is really give you that, that feeling that you're just working on one app, um, but we can also switch certain things on and off as we go. Um, so if we just quickly look at that GIF, for example, if I have a specific work order and I can see that the status for that um, is, for example, that more information is requested, um, this can, could have been triggered by a link where I might have just gone in and I want to log a compliment or a complaint or I want to give the, the information that was asked for. Um, I can simply navigate to, to that page. Um, I can see the latest feedback. So someone obviously asked me to upload additional images of the damaged areas so that they can um, request the right parts. Then we can say, is the response required or do we just need a document or, and are they mandatory or not? So let's say I just want to upload supporting documents. I can quite easily select that and attach it. And then when I, when I submit it, this can actually do a, a status change in the external system as well uh, to notify the right people and um, of the information that has been submitted. And yeah, that's, that's the long and the short of the feedback app. Obviously very powerful, very nice to work with. Um, we, we just need to make sure that we apply it in the right space. Um, and I mean, that can, that can greatly shorten feedback loops. So just quickly having a look at, at, at what we did this time. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm known for, for talking quite quickly, so I'll, I'll take any questions in a, in a, in a, short, um, a short period of time. Um, we looked at work identification and validation using search request app and then feedback on work. And then what we'll, what we'll try and do in, in the next session is really look at daily allocation and the execution of the work. So once the work has been received and we have done our planning and our scheduling, or if uh, breakdown work or, or urgent work made its way onto our board, um, how do we do that daily allocation and, and what do we do to address that? And then the, the execution as well. So just a, a quick um, look at the, at the different apps that we'll be looking at next time um, is firstly the home app. 
And I think Stefan Stefan said that this is what we try and well, he said we we use um, on key action to orchestrate the the different layers. Um, but within the specific um, within the specific platform, we also want to give the, the, the users a one stop shop that they can go to. Um, they can log in, they can see um, the organizations that they're linked to. So for example, if it's a contractor, they can log in and they can see they work for company A and company B, and they can see, okay, they want to work on, on company A now, they've got a work order for company A, they can log in and yeah, we can give a really curated um, look at the at the different apps that they've got. And as Stefan mentioned, we can have, we've got quite a, quite a fine uh, granularity in terms of the roles that we assign to them and the roles that they've got in the specific or different organizations. So in a specific organization, the, the organization might not mind um, if they can update the asset tree, but in a different organization, uh, we want to stop them before updating the asset tree. Uh, we just want to give them the opportunity to, to make recommendations, which can then be reviewed by, um, by an admin person later. Then um, something that you might have seen in the videos, um, and I think um, Martin has also alluded to it, is the chat app, which is integrated into to most of these apps, um, which is, I think, uh, going to be a game changer. Um, so the person who, who logged the request can quite easily um, ask for updates. Um, the person handling the request in, in the organization can, can give feedback, or you can even speak to the contractor or the person executing the work. Um, so we'll have a quick, quick look at that next time. Um, then we've got an app that is currently, its working name is WorkBuddy, um, but we will put its name up for auction in our next, um, in our next session. Um, and this is really for, for people needing to look at the work that's been assigned to their section. So you can have uh, supervisors looking at all the unallocated work, they can assign it to specific staff members, and then staff members can then also um, keep track of their work um, the, the work that's been assigned to them. We've got quite a few roles or, or rights that we can apply here. So you can have, a, once again, a very curated experience um, in terms of, of, of what you want them to see in the app and what they need to be able to do in the app. Um, but this is, for example, where you would log in to see what you need to do today, what's the status of them, and then to navigate to, to different apps. And then our last app, um, and, and probably one of our flagship apps, um, is the field engineering app. Um, which allows you to, to do work execution. Um, if I just quickly play that little GIF, um, you can update a myriad of things um, in this app. You can update attributes on assets. You can add new assets. You can, you can edit assets. Um, so, so it's got a really, really powerful AI free functionality that we've, that we've built in, um, but then also work execution. Um, if we quickly just wait for the GIF to complete, um, We've, we've also recently brought tasks into this. So work is assigned to someone and this is what they do to actually um, go and execute that work. Um, we've got some translations in the apps, but this is, for example, a, a task. We've got simplified views and, and more, um, more uh, intricate views that we can specify in the apps as well. So we can really, we can really customize it to, to the user experience needed um, for that organization. But this is yeah, this is a, a really powerful app, and um, you can't see it in the in the little gift there. But this is, for example, also integrated with the chat app. So, for example, if a contractor gets to start and no one can open for him, you can quickly open the chat and, and notify um, notify the requester or someone linked to that work order in the organization that they're there, or if they need some more information, or if if you want to ask the contractor, listen, um, this is assigned to you. Um, how far are you are you still coming? Uh, you no longer need to, to have phone calls. You can actually do it on the work order itself. And then you've got all that traceability um, on the work that was done as well. That's it from me in a, in a sprint. Um, let me just rate myself. Very good. Very good. Oh, I see, I can't. Um, well done, Jolene. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's it, that's it from, from my side. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions. This was, as I said, a, a really quick sprint. There's, there's quite a lot of information and, and a lot of things that we can that we can do in these apps. Um, and you can see our contact details there. You're welcome to connect with me um, if you would like like some more information. But as as Dirk said initially, we can we can take some questions now, um, or if there's anything unclear, or, or something that you yeah. think I lied about. 
Brilliant. Thanks, Marius, for that nice pre and detailed presentation. We've got a couple of uh, minutes left, and there's three questions currently that we can have a look at. And the first, I, I see Stefan's got his hand up for that one. It's a question that uh, I think it's two people logged in under the same name. We are on Radizi Dunmore and James Matsika. And the question is, is the app only for where contractors are used or can be can it be used in house? Stefan, you want to take that one? Yeah, I think that that one uh, quite clearly, Dirk, um, definitely not just for contractors. So um, if you're an organization that has your own artisans and, and maintenance staff, definitely can be used for, for that purpose as well. Um, and also, as, as Moritz mentioned, uh, in, in terms of logging the work or service requests, uh, we definitely make a, a provision for both logging uh, as a guest or then as a registered user of your organization with that user being linked in the back end to the enterprise asset management system so definitely no limitations in that regard i don't know if that answers the question i think it does i think it does thanks stefan i think next up um bonging course he going to ask the question Maritz, and i'm going to pass this one to you and he says we installed the qr barcodes on every asset or equipment and you'll find that the artisans and technicians instead of going to that specific equipment to scan the code he or she skips that option because of laziness and the question then is is there any way to avoid that Maritz. um i'm not sure if if this is related to executing the work or logging the request so logging the request definitely uh, we've got different options there so you can say for example do you want them to be able to navigate to the to to specific assets or do you want to enforce them to actually scan a QR code to log something on that? And then in terms of, of the execution of the work, um, we've got a quite a quite a nice backlog um, feature in, in our product management tool um, where these kind of ideas are logged. And, and that is one of the ideas that I have seen recently. So for example, starting starting a work order by scanning a QR code. Um, that is that is something that we will definitely port um, to the to the field engineering app. Thanks, uh, Dirk, um, if I can yeah. also maybe just quickly jump mm -hmm. in here, I, I, I presume this is a user that might be using the work manager application also currently. And there's a function now where one of the settings where you can uh, force the users to first uh, scan the code before they can uh, start to do feedback and, and open up the work order. Um, so I'll just reach out to us and we can uh, help you with that uh, setting afterwards if that is what you're referring to. Maybe sorry if I can also just jump in on this one. So in terms of the QR code scanning capability, it allows you a slightly more advanced feature than you know, just the barcode scan. So once the exact asset is scanned, then you could actually ask a few questions or, or request the person wanting to register the work to identify the specific component. So I think that will also help a bit to um, not just scan the general barcode and open a work order. You know, the, the person is going to be asked to, as Moritz has shown us, specifically identify which component is it that they want to register the work against, which hopefully Bongen Kozi would, would help a bit in uh, eliminating that problem that you that you raised. Thanks, guys. Um, next question, Hatim Abdallah from Khatoum asks the question, uh, adding other languages since different users will be using it. So it's, uh, ability to translate the content that's a, a very good question and and yes we So at the moment, we can set it for organization. What we would like to do is in the experience that you are presented with, um, gets, gets translated. And I think that the, the function or the capability to translate certain um, content um, is, is really, I almost want to say a couple of clicks of, of, of a button and, and there you go. So, so we can, for example, if we need to translate it into a language that we don't support yet, we can quite easily give you an export of all the phrases that can be translated or that are used in the apps. And you can give us the, even if it's just a first version um, of the translation into something like, for example, example Spanish or Portuguese, um, and then we can we can import that, and, and we've got that option at our disposal. So, so very good question, and I think something that's becoming more and more relevant. Um, and I think also, if we can if we can ask the questions better when we when we identify the work, and if if users are almost presented with with something that they understand better. And then the quality of, of information that we gather will. 
Thanks, Maritz. Uh, two more questions to follow quickly, and I think we're running out of time a bit. Um, Tabitha Moniela asks, I believe the app will be different from organization to organization. Does the same apply from user to user within the same organization? Uh, Stefan, you want to take that? Yeah, maybe I can answer. So the, the apps in general um, is, is a standard app, but there's a lot of uh, custom configuration that you can apply to the app that makes different capabilities visible or not. So um, each organization can have that tap uh, tailor made for them in that sense, but it's not a it's not the code beneath the app is not it's not different. So, but there's a huge amount of capabilities in that regard. And then, as far as the end user is concerned, it, it will depend on um, what the user role is, what they can see or can access within the app. So, we've got quite a strong user um, role capability that that is enforced through the apps as well, which which should support that requirement. Excellent. And, and perhaps then, Maritz, the last question, also coming from Tabita, um, question, how does one receive notification once an individual uploads uh, information? Does it come in uh, in like an SMS notification or can you only see the latest updates once you open the app? So it's all around the notifications ability of these apps. So we can, upon logging of the request, um, we can share a link um, which can be used at any time and then um, in our use cases so far, we can use Anki to then um, share a link when a certain status update was, was done. So for example, if a work order is put into a status um, where you've configured a trigger, um, you can share a link with them to the feedback app or even just a link to, to the most recent um, information on the work order to say, this work order has been closed, um, please have a look. And then if you want to, you can navigate to, to the feedback app from there. Um, so at the moment, the, the initial request is, is handled by the app itself. So we send you a request to say, thanks for logging it. Here's a link to, to stay updated. But then um, links downstream um, will, will be handled by the, by the um, underlying EAMS. But Maritz, uh, in notifications, do we, do we understand that? Yeah. You can also uh, In app notifications, so obviously for the chat app, um, we, we do that. And, and the nice thing about the, the chat app um, is that it's integrated into the home app. Um, so you you almost get a get a WhatsApp like or a Telegram like experience um, in the in the specific um, app. So yes, you, you, get, you we do do in app applications as well. Maybe just to add that 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 would be the the route in future. You know, where the backend Onki system has got its notification management system, where you can set up various rules to get e email or SMS notifications at the moment. Um, you know, the in-app notifications, exactly like Merit says, that's integrated with your mobile device that you get a, like you get a WhatsApp notification that that will become standard across more of the apps, you know, that um, you don't have other alternative means to be notified. It will be like a proper app. Excellent. Thanks so much. I think we're out of time. Yeah. Thanks so much for everyone joining. See one more message. Um, yeah, um, so thanks so much for joining. Thanks for the uh, panelists for the preparation, Maritz, especially to you. There's a lot of work to prepare all these little videos and gifts. You did a great job. And I hope to see all of you again on the 22nd when we will take on the second part of this webinar series. Thank you very much and keep well. Have a nice day.